You talk a lot about doing the hard things, but tell us what have you learned from rock bottom? Yeah, 2016 has been an interesting year. For me, it was, it was a fracture in the femur where I had an entire year plan and then just everything was wiped from that. And so for me, what I found is actually that hitting rock bottom, that's the time where you are forced to then really look inwards and discover who you are. It's great when you're on top, when you're riding this wave, when you're winning race after race, it's easy to ignore the hard things. It's easy to ignore your problems or to just push them aside or to think I'll deal with that later or just you're riding this wave. And when it's you're sitting there and it's just you and yourself, you some, you have to confront that. And so for me, that's what this entire year has been. Um, what's a lesson that fear has taught you? I think that I have learned that if something is fearful to you, then you need to do it mm. and you need to explore it. And fear is a very powerful emotion. And there were so many things that I was afraid of this past year with injury. And like not being able to come back. Yeah. Or... And I'm still I, I, 110% honest. Mm -hmm. I still struggle with that every single day. You lose that confidence as an athlete. Whenever you are knocked off of your pedestal or whatever you're on your track and you're forced to kind of come back and, and question whether or not you can quote unquote get back to where you were. Mm -hmm that's something that you really have to work through. And I've never really had to deal with that, just self-doubt. And I, so I think for me, fear is teaching me almost to reframe and to think that it's not getting back to where I was, it's shaping myself as a new person going forward. And um, to realize and to embrace those opportunities. When did you develop that notion of fear of being a guiding light and how are you using it now? through what you're going through. Confronting that fear, that first of all, the first time you do it, it's so, I mean, it's so paralyzing, mm. but it becomes easier. And you realize that, and if you incorporate that, if you make it a practice, then it, the day-to-day -day things become easier. And so for me as a kid who was actually very fearful and very, I don't want to take risks, I want to stay inside this shell, and this is my life plan. And I literally, probably when I was 13 years old, had my entire life planned out. Wow. It is nowhere where <laughs> I am right now. And thank God it's not. And I think that it's been through the experiences of challenging myself and through confronting that head on and embracing the fear and embracing the pain mm -hmm. that I've then come to where I am. So I go through this notion of, of what I am. Mm. And I kind of like that I don't have to define it and I don't want to define it. And I don't like the labels because I've realized now that I don't have to narrowly define myself in a box mm -hmm. and that I can constantly reinvent myself. And I feel like not enough people do that or give themselves the opportunities to do that. Yeah, reinvention to me has been really important in my life. Mm -hmm. And the, the way that I think about identity is um, maybe adjacent to that, which is I, I have this vision in my head about who I want to become. And part of the reason that I have to do the things that scare me is because the person that I want to become would do those things. Mm -hmm. um, and that as I tell myself, and I don't know like if this is just me or if a lot of people do this, but I'm always telling myself a story about myself, right? Like you're the type of person that does that. You get out of bed fast. You do this, you do things that scare you, all of that to sort of create this self-fulfilling prophecy in myself. So that's why it was so interesting for me to hear that you know, you would think that as you're doing these obstacle races that they would get easier. So when you're saying that in some ways they actually get more difficult, um, that was really fascinating. And you have a super interesting way of dealing with that, which I'll call chunking. I don't know if, I don't know if you use that word. I'll take that. I'm a huge Goonies fan. So anything that is like truffle shuffle and chunk, I'll, uh, You'll go I'll, I'll go with. Yes. <laughs> so you break things up into small pieces. Yeah. So I find that people get, if you look at the entirety of a task, it's very easy to get overwhelmed. And so for me, you start, you start a 24 hour race or you start a hundred mile race and you're, you look at the clock and you realize I'm two hours, I have 22 hours left to go and I'm exhausted right now. And that's overwhelming. That's when people quit. 
So instead, in my mind, I think, okay, I'm going through, if I'm going through a really rough patch in a race because things ebbs, ebbs and flows, I think just get to the next obstacle, just get to the next obstacle, just get to the next lap and not think about the entire, like the grand scheme of things. Mm. It's just these little compartmentalizing things. So when you're going through so much pain and when you're going through hardship, that's the thing that keeps me sane is just to not think about the end game, to not try and think about two days from now when this race will be over, but just the next task at hand. Is there a certain way that you want to be when it comes to pain? Like I want to charge through pain or how do you conceptualize pain? I make friends with pain. I think that pain is something that we're so fearful of. We spend so much money trying to avoid pain. Do you think mental toughness can be cultivated? I absolutely think so. So what's that process? For me, I think that it's it's doing the hard things. It's mm. not taking the easy way out. Do you like make a list? Like <laughs> these are the hard things or? No, well, I think that the hard things are different for everyone. Mm. And I think that you kind of know because you go back to that notion of fear. And if you're fearful of it, that's a hard thing for you. Mm. For instance, I realized very early on when I was trying to become an attorney that I always had this notion that I wanted to be a prosecutor and on, and on stage and things like that. And I realized I don't do public speaking very well. And that I would seize up and it was awful for me. So I had to- I've seen you do public speaking very, very well. But it's one of those things that I've had to cultivate. Mm. And it's one of those things that I've had to practice. And so I think that, that the hard things, you know, give you, cultivate that mental toughness. And people say, okay, well, how do I, how do I make it a habit? Or how, yeah. do I, how do I cultivate mental toughness? And I say, that, well, that's what you do. You make it a habit, is that you don't give yourself the option. And something, you, you pick something, put it into your routine, whether it's waking thir up 30 minutes earlier every day so you can actually get out the door to move your body and you just don't think about it and you don't give yourself the option to not do it. So what advice would you give to somebody in your shoes, a mm -hmm. true world-class athlete, they've had this catastrophic injury, mm -hmm. what, what's your advice to them? In, in that moment of uncertainty, when they don't know if they're gonna be able to come back or not. I think really it's acceptance is, is where you need to end up. You talk about it in stages of grief. Mm. Um, you know, everyone talks about injury as kind of like the stages of grief after death, um, almost and not to be that dramatic. But to realize that it's okay how you're feeling and kick, scream, cry, do whatever it is you need to do, let it out, but give yourself a time limit. So I said after my injury, so I had, an, and I was miserable and I was, you know, just a bear to be around. But I told myself, okay, I'm going to give myself two weeks to be an awful person about this. And then you know what? I'm going to pick up and move on and say, what can I do now in this scenario? And really what it was and what I found is I cut myself off and then I looked at how can I make the best of of this situation. And for me, that ended up in being able to do commentary work and being able to be on the course, be on the sidelines, support my fellow athletes, and actually take joy in their, in, in their accomplishments, in their victories, instead of seeing them as competitors. Right. And so it's about reframing what you can do in that moment.